Hi guys, welcome to the brand new Suzuki Jimny. Um, so this is one of the most highly anticipated cars of this year. It uh, brings in a very rugged sort of go anywhere nature to the small or very compact SUV market segment. For this video, I thought I'd put together a very in-depth, uh, detailed review of the car. Um, and we'll actually look at two different vehicles. So we've got the five-speed manual, which is what we've got today. Um, we also had the four-speed automatic version. This is the first automatic for the, for the Jimny. We had the four-speed automatic a couple of weeks ago where we did some pretty hardcore sort of off-roading um, and also some highway driving, but we'll get to that a bit later on. For now, let's check out this manual version. We'll go over some of the introductory details. Just one variant is on sale in Australia, um, although you can get it in six different colors, including three two-tone colors. What you're looking at here is the brand new kinetic yellow, which has just been developed for the Jimny and it comes standard with the, the black contrast roof. All models come with these 15 inch gunmetal gray alloy wheels wrapped in 195 80 series tires. Just taking a look at that sideball there, you can get a bit of a hint of you know, how serious this car is at off-roading. So that sideball will, will bellow out and wrap around rocks um, and also provide some comfort. Although this is a brand new car, make no mistake, it definitely has some old school charm. So it comes with a live axle rear suspension setup, which is no big deal. A lot of the dual cab utes and things still have live axles at the rear, but this also has a live axle at the front. That's quite unusual for a brand new car and it's normally only associated with very hardcore off-road vehicles. There are coil springs at the front and rear though, so that does give you some comfort when you're on the road. Another old school thing is the drum brakes at the rear. So I haven't seen those on a standard brand new car for a while. And then there's just solid discs on the front. They're not even ventilated. Obviously this is a very lightweight car. It only weighs just over a thousand kilos uh, from memory, which is um, yeah, very, very light. So it obviously doesn't need big eye popping Brembos or anything like that to pull it up. I think you'd have to agree, it is definitely a very cool car in today's market. Like it really breaks out of the norm, it stands out as something different, especially against all the sort of soft rotors and crossovers that are out there today. It's also very distinctive as well. So Jimny has carried through a lot of its heritage in the design. So you've got a five slot vertical grille at the front, and then these little grills on the side here, they don't actually go through, but if you look at some of the past Suzuki Jimny's and um, C Suzuki Sierra's, you'll see they're actually vents, a bit like the one on the top there, the plenum chamber. And then another big element with the old school charm is the front and rear overhangs. The rear overhang especially, like look at that, it's just, just hanging over. This gives you an awesome departure angle. In fact, it's 49 degrees. That means you can pretty much go down some slope that's you know, coming straight up here without actually touching the rear bumper bar. And then at the front, it's a pretty short overhang as well. It's not quite as impressive as the rear, but if you look at that, it's, um, it just overhangs just by a little bit. It gives you 37 degrees approach angle. Ground clearance is rated at 210 millimeters, which doesn't really stand out when you look at other cars in the market. But you've got to remember this has a very short wheelbase. So with a very short wheelbase, it means you can clamber over things and it's not actually going to scrub out because the wheels are so close together. So 210 millimeters for a short wheelbase car with very short front and rear overhangs is actually really impressive. Let's have a look inside, but we'll start with the boot here because I find this pretty funny. So there's two little sort of dicky seats in the back here. Um, they are suitable for adults. You do actually get some leg room there. Um, but when you fold them down, it gives it sort of like a hatchback uh, volume there. It's very boxy as well, and plastic backed seats so you can load things onto them. According to the specs, that's 377 litres of cargo capacity, which is not too bad. It compares with something like a Mazda 3, uh, Volkswagen Golf, and those sorts of cars. But with them flipped up, you've actually got a little shelf there for the passenger to, you know, put, put their phone or whatever. And you've also got a little 12 volt socket in the back, which is very handy. With both seats up, you've only got about 80 litres of space. So it's sort of enough for a very, very light shopping or just uh, some, a gym bag or something like that. The side swinging uh, tailgate here doesn't actually have a stopper, although the gas strut is 
pretty high tension so it's not going to collapse on you but some vehicles that have these sort of side hinge swinging tailgates have a little clicker that you can lock it into place doesn't look like that's got anything for that although it is very light so it's if it does come slamming down on you which i don't think it will like even there we're parked on a bit of an angle and it's actually pushing it back up the hill there by itself yeah let's have a look at the front so like the exterior the interior is very cool it's uh they've made it so it's a quite a funky sort of design suzuki has obviously gone for a macho style look at these um square gauges here with little fake allen key bolts more more fake allen keys just there and then you've got these toggle switches down below for your power windows and uh, some of the driving functions so i'll start it up we can get it all get it all working key operated start no push button here um, although it does look like some models come with a push button maybe overseas or something like that up on the dash you've got suzuki's universal seven inch touchscreen media interface it's very easy to use you've got a home button which takes you to this main menu and then you've got sort of four boxes that you can choose from including standard sat nav uh, the radio and then you can go to your phone and go through the various settings only thing i am missing is uh, some of the vehicle settings so if you go to settings here there isn't much to choose from you can change the unit of measurement and the clock but there's no sort of door locking settings um, or you know headlights or anything like that it's it's pretty basic but look for a car of this price range i think this is an awesome little screen um, it is a touch screen it gives you a rear view camera as well pretty clear um, but yeah i think this is a very functional little screen for uh, for a car like this I'm not a fan of the volume touch button system, which I think you can actually use your finger to scroll up and down if you want to make it a bit quicker. But a conventional knob, I think, is still the best way to go. Some other manufacturers are doing this as well with the touch system, but I don't know. I don't think it's, it's working. Definitely looks cleaner and, you know, a bit more modern, but um, just in terms of functionality, if you want to quickly turn it up or down, you've got to get used to that. Basic gauges in front of the driver. Um, you can actually go through the different information, uh, trip information in between the two gauges. Not sure if you can see that, but uh, you've got average fuel consumption and range. And then when you click it into four wheel drive, pretty sure a little thing comes up. Up the top there, say, so, yep, you've selected four wheel drive. Um, I'll speak a bit more about that in a second. Uh, what else have we got here we've got electric side mirrors obviously headlight washers which is pretty decadent for a car of this nature and then uh, lane departure warning and autonomous emergency braking which you can actually turn off which is pretty good in my opinion because when you're off-roading sometimes you know you might be going quite slowly down a track and there's a tree um, that you're approaching and you need to make a, a, a hook you know left or right at the last minute you don't want the autonomous emergency braking going off um, when you're just you know tr trundling about and trying to creep through a narrow track or a technical track so it's good that you can you can actually turn that off i've got the lane departure warning turned off um, just because that's just my personal preference in most cars that i get into i do test it out but then i turn it off I, i'm not really a fan i'm a bit old school in that way um, sometimes if I'm you know using the lane to to go down a nice curvy road I'll use all of the road and that thing goes flashing and tells me that I'm you know might be veering off the road or something like that it just becomes annoying for me nothing bad about the Suzuki system it's just that's just my personal preference but yeah I love all these details so everything is very easy to find you've got your climate module here um, it is actually climate control you can turn your fan speed up and down you've got a digital little readout there for your exact temperature that you choose and then your air circulation control and then mode for the different um, vents that you're using down below there is a 12 volt power socket and a tw uh, usb socket as well and a little slot for your phone something that is very old school is the space around the gear lever it's just carpet 
Um, I think it would be useful if Suzuki just wrapped this around in plastic and gave you a few more options for storage. Um, but it is, it makes it interesting. Like when you get in the car, it's not boring in any way. And it reminds you of, of sort of a classic car that's brand new. Um, it's a bit like the uh, 70 series Land Cruiser in that sense, that it's an old car, but it's brand new. Like even the, um, the windscreen wipers there, they're just, you know, you're pretty much the same design as you'll see on an 80s or even 70s vehicle. And I like that. It's got that old school charm about it. You do have a little module here for your cup holders and another little slot for your phone. There are a couple of button blanks there. I'm not sure what they do. As I said, in Australia, there aren't any options for this car or any other variants. There's only just the single variant, just the paint, uh, three different paint options that you can get, or six altogether, but yeah, that's the three different two-tone options. Um, so I don't know what they would actually do. Maybe overseas you have heated seats or something. I, I don't actually know. You've got another little trough here and a little hang-on handle when you're um, off-roading. And a pretty compact glove box. You won't be wanting for more headroom. This is definitely a very high ceiling. Um, so even if you are quite tall, I think you would fit in just nicely. Um, and legroom is also pretty good. You can slide the seat. I've got my actual camera bag behind there, but you can slide the seat pretty far back. Um, so even tall people should be able to get comfortable. There is no reach adjustment for the steering column. It's just up and down, which is a little bit disappointing. I would like to pull it forward a bit and slide my seat back a little bit for that absolute perfect driving position. Um, the steering wheel itself is also on a bit of a tilt forward angle. So it's not square with you, uh, with your chest or anything. It's tilted forward slightly. Um, but overall, the, yeah, the driving position is not too bad. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. Definitely got lots of room. Let's have a look at those back seats and see if we can actually get in there. We'll just jump in the passenger side. Matter of pulling the lever up and it does slide forward for you. That's actually not too bad back here. Um, I know that seat isn't in the perfect position, but that's a pre pretty reasonable setting just there. They've got ample leg room in the front and my knees aren't even touching the seat. The only thing that is suffering a little bit is my back is actually on these headrests. Flip them up a bit. It's, um, yeah, it's actually not too bad at all. There is a bit of a step just here that forces you to put your feet forward, but that's fine because there is room underneath the seat as well. And as I said, there's a shelf here. It's sort of a bit of an armrest, but makes you lean over a bit, but, um, yeah, I'm surprised. It's not actually too bad at all. You could have, you know, carry two adults back here for a reasonably long journey and they won't get too uncomfortable. There is no support with the bench though. That's probably the worst thing about it. Um, there's no sort of bolsters on the sides there to hold you in and the, the, the seat floor there is, is very flat. But it, it's pretty cushy. Like it, there is a bit of give there, um, so it shouldn't be too bad even off-roading. You can also use these cup holders because they are set quite further back at the, uh, the center console there. So you could actually use that as your own cup holder. There are two uh, baby seat anchor points for both the seats, um, which is pretty handy. And I think an actual baby capsule would fit there. I'm not sure about a rear-facing one, but definitely a forward-facing seat would probably fit there. It would definitely have the clearance above, and it shouldn't overhang that seat there too much, if at all. But yeah, overall, it's not too bad at all. You really could use this as a four-seat vehicle, even for adults. I love the mats that Suzuki has provided. They're rubber mats, and they sort of dish down. So it catches all the mud or even watery sort of slosh without going into the carpet. And it's got this grippy surface on the back. Um, some off-road cars come with carpet mats that are, you know, nice lush carpet. And you just shake your head thinking, why have you fitted that when it's just going to get ruined um, as soon as you go off-road? So that's, that's very handy that Suzuki has provided some decent rubber mats. As I mentioned, only one variant is on sale in Australia and it comes with a 1.5 litre four-cylinder non-turbo or naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine. 
It produces 75 kilowatts and 130 newton meters, which is a nice step up from the previous model, which produced 62.5 kilowatts and 110 newton meters. As I mentioned though, this is a lightweight car, so you don't need all that much power. And this is designed primarily for, you know, rugged off-roading and plucky little tracks and so on, rather than outright acceleration. Anyway, let's go for a drive in this manual version and see how it goes. So first things first, there are no driving modes per se. Um, you do have hill descent control and you can turn the traction and stability control off. And then there's also a two speed transfer box. Basically what that means is you have high range and low range. So two wheel drive high range, which is rear wheel drive with normal gearing and then four wheel drive with normal gearing and then four wheel drive with low range gearing. Anyway, we'll just leave it in two wheel drive for the moment and uh, see how it drives on the road. Excellent visibility. I can see all around me, even through the back blind spot there. I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. And then quite tall side windows. You can see straight over the top. Um, that's definitely an old school charm as well. And then thin doors. So some vehicles might use, um, you know, quite chunky doors and you feel very submerged in. This feels like you're in an old school car. The door is ending just straight down there. It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite an experience compared with some of the modern cars. So first gear is quite short anyway. In second already, 40 kilometers an hour. And third. One of my friends has a previous gem, Jimny, and uh, I asked him what he thought of the new model. And he said the biggest thing that, would, that he'd noticed was, was an improvement was just the refinement. So in here, it's very quiet, it's smooth, you don't have any rattles or any creaks or anything going on. It feels like a brand new car. Um, and, it, and in that sense, it does compete well with some of the rivals. So you do get a bit of wine with the gearbox. I'm not sure if it's got synchromesh gearing uh, for all of the ratios, but yeah, you definitely get that wine, especially changing down gears. You got that noise. Um, it's a bit like having a straight cut gearbox almost. Uh, there is a bit of shunting as well with the drive line I've noticed with the manual transmission, although that just could be my fault of not changing gears smoothly enough. hundred kilometers an hour speed limit so now I can show you how it cruises on the highway um, although this isn't a highway it's a bit of a, a winding road uh, the previous model did have a high ratio gearbox and this does as well so fifth gear uh, I'm going 80 kilometers an hour and it's two and a half thousand revs already I take it up to hundred kilometers an hour can't really do that on this road actually it's pretty high speed limit for this road but yeah, you're basically doing over 3,000 RPM to, to maintain 100 kilometers an hour. It does feel a bit wobbly on the road. Uh, obviously that helps with flexibility off the road. So you do get a lot of wheel travel and a bit of flex, but yeah, going over bumps like that just then, I'm not sure if you noticed that, but quite a lot of bump steer and actually change the direction of the car, just hitting a few little undulations and potholes and things. So this road is 100 km an hour speed limit, but I don't feel completely confident in the car to take it up to 100. I'm only going 80 at the moment through these bends. And in that sense, it's definitely an old school vehicle. Yeah, so over these, some of these juddery bumps, see so just then it sort of skipped across by a couple of tire widths, I suppose. Some more bumps along here. Yeah, so it does bounce around a bit. And there's a fair bit of play on center as well. If you've just stepped out of a Mazda CX-3 or something like that, another compact SUV, although I think this sits in a segment even below that, um, you, you might be a bit shocked because, yeah, this isn't meant to be a crossover or, you know, even a soft roader. This is a pretty hardcore off-road vehicle. And as you'll find out in our off-road test coming up very soon, um, you'll see just how awesome it is when it when the going gets rough. The engine produces a nice little note, although it is a little bit rough in my opinion. It's uh, high compression, running 10, 10.0 to 1 compression ratio, um, double overhead cams, variable valve timing. 
it just have a, has a bit of roughness like a like a yeah certain roughness to it um, but at the exhaust pipe um, it does sound pretty good it's got like a little note to it 100 kilometers an hour I could show you the the gearing that's fourth gear at the moment got it flat to the floor taking a while to get up to 100 so that's 3000 rpm at 100 kilometers an hour as I mentioned I have tested the automatic version um, I can't remember what the revs were but I'm pretty sure this cruise is better the manual version cruises a bit better than the automatic in terms of ride comfort it's not too bad the uh, the tall profile tires obviously provide some give and the the coil springs at the front and rear absorb bumps pretty well it's just the tracking that uh, has a bit of a problem and I think that's associated with live axle suspension um, but yeah in terms of the actual comfort in terms of your impact on your on your backside and your back it's not too bad at all especially for a rugged SUV I'd even go as far as saying that it's more comfortable than a lot of the popular dual cab utes that are on the market at the moment that have leaf spring rear ends um, even despite having a longer wheelbase which does help with comfort if you like sporty driving but you're you know a bit afraid to buy a sports car because you might lose your license um, this is definitely a good car to consider because it feels like you're going fast all the time um, and that's exciting like it's uh, you can't deny the fact that it is exciting I can even come around this corner now the speed limit is a hundred I'm going 80 I've got a uh, Toyota Hilux up in front of me that's just went through that corner like this like it's nothing whereas this feels like it's almost you know on the ragged edge not quite but uh, yeah it feels it feels exciting even just driving normal it does come pretty extensively equipped these new Jimny's it's got automatic LED headlights uh, daytime running lights and cruise control as well um, which is pretty good for a for a cheap car speaking of which prices in Australia started about 25,000 uh, depending on the automatic and manual but yeah as you can probably tell it's pretty quiet in here it's it's quite refined you can hold a conversation without raising your voice which is probably not something you could do with the previous model even though it is revving out at almost 3000 rpm it doesn't feel like it's screaming so that's that's quite a good thing it's not uh it doesn't become tiresome because the engine's you know revving out as you're just cruising along it's pretty quiet and just humming in the background that's good for long distance touring so you could actually use this for a bit of long distance touring i did drive this manual version earlier today on the freeway which was had 110 km an hour speed limit so if you push it up to 115 or indicated 115 120 or something like that it does start to scream a little bit more you're approaching 4000 rpm um, but anything sort of 100 kilometers an hour or below is just fine so we'll turn around and uh, i'll show you a bit of the performance and then we'll switch over to the automatic off-road test for you. you can you can see how it is um, doing hardcore off-roading flat to the floor just after 6,000 rpm red line and that's 100 I have actually tested the 0 to 100 of the automatic and manual I won't tell you the times I'll save that for the the full video that we'll put together soon but I can tell you that the manual is a bit quicker than the automatic the manual is also more fuel efficient according to the official average figures um, I can't remember what they are but I'll flash them up on the screen now I think the manual is something like 6.3 litres per hundred whereas the automatic is 6.9 I could be a little bit off there I can't quite remember but uh, yeah the manual is definitely a little bit more fuel efficient this has been a highly anticipated vehicle for the market and for good reason it is an exciting refreshing 
and sort of plucky go anywhere SUV for the market and there's no real competition in this price range. So you've got the Toyota, 80, uh, Toyota 70 series as I mentioned, you've also got the Mercedes G-Wagon which is kind of the same sort of flavour as this but that's obviously much more expensive. So there you have it, a quick test of the, uh, the manual transmission version. I'll uh, switch over now to the automatic version with our bit of, off, bit of uh, highway driving but also some pretty hardcore off-roading. Hey guys, now we're in the automatic version. So it's the same car, same specification. It is a four-speed automatic, which is pretty old school, like the, like the rest of the car, like the underpinnings, I suppose. But it, um, as you can see, it probably needs another couple of ratios at least just to sort of maximize that 1.5 liter engine. Because on the highway, yeah, it does, does scream a bit when you're up at higher speed. And then, yeah, obviously lower down, it it's, doesn't have the torque to, to pull through the longer gears. Um, I think if it fight, had a five speed or a six speed, um, it'll yeah, divide up the, the, the torque that's available a bit better. Obviously that'll add weight and cost to the car. Out on the highway, we can, I can show you some of the sort of negatives to the car, I suppose. This is a three star ANCAP car. Um, so the safety is not, um, it doesn't compare well to other compact SUVs, although they might not offer the, uh, the off-road ability as this. It's still a, a, thing, a, fact, a thing you have to factor in, especially, especially me as a journalist, I have to talk about these sorts of things. Um, but for me, the, it's the stability that's the problem. Um, the handling is not too bad. When you're going around corners, the, the steering and the chassis and everything, even the body control, there's not too much body roll when you're going around the corners. It's the stability um, that just worry, it makes you a little bit nervous. So around this slight bend here, I'm going 110 k's an hour. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel all that stable. And if a car goes past, it is very much impacted by, by turbulence and wind, especially a truck. Um, I was following a truck the other day, just sort of sitting in its sort of slipstream. And the amount of battering that the car gets is more than I've experienced in sort of any other car, brand new car in this sort of market segment. Um, it really is affected by the wind. Another little test I like to do in most cars that we, uh, that we do reviews on is what I just call a flick test. So you're driving along, preferably not with all cars around and things, but you, I can do it gently so it's, um, I can show you what I mean. I'll wait till the road goes a bit straight. So basically what you do is just flick the steering wheel a little bit, just a little bit, and you can feel this car really just sways around, even though I'm just, just touching it. You can feel the back end really, really swaying around as it stabilizes itself. It's really, um, really unusual for a brand new car anyway. If you do that in a, in a normal hatchback or something like that, and you just, just flick the wheel, you can actually do it a lot more than that. Um, it'll just do, it does nothing. It just goes that way, it comes back that way it depends on you know how quick the the steering bounces back but it just yeah <laughs> you, you can't feel that but it's definitely swaying side to side just with a gentle little flick i'd hate to see what this car would do in in one of those moose tests where they they flick it from side to side at 60 or 70 kilometers an hour i don't think it would fare very well obviously i'm trying to nitpick here um this car is designed for off-roading it's perfect for a farm or something like that um, or even in the city, around city driving, it's fine. The gearbox is, is, is good for that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're planning to use it as a uh, sort of highway car, I would probably recommend something else or at least you check out something else. Power. Yes, performance. <laughs> it uh, doesn't really like going on the highway that much. I think the good thing about it though is that it's at least um, it's eager. Uh, you know, some cars out there that feel really sluggish and slow and they just feel like they don't, you push the accelerator and it's like, it's like waking up a teenager or something. It's like they really don't want to go. Whereas this, it's definitely eager. You put your foot down and it will, it kicks down and it likes to rev. It just doesn't really go all that quickly. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, that makes it exciting and you're easy, easy to keep your license in this car anyway. We're about to approach Arimba for our four-wheel drive test. 
I'll try and uh, do a bit of combination of driving the car with the camera on my head. Um, I'll also stick the GoPro around the, the around the car too, and I'll uh, I'll get out as well and get someone else to drive so we can show you as it's climbing up certain sections. But I'll see what I can do anyway. Um, so it turns out I'm not very good at filming off-road driving from outside the car with the camera on my head. The problem was I didn't account for the steepness of some of the climbs, which meant the camera was pointing straight into the ground rather than up the hill. Here are some edits of the better bits of filming, but we do apologise. To make up for it, we headed out off-road in the manual version as well, which you'll see a bit later in this film. Might just get out of his way. Beautiful. So here we are just at the start of the, the course here. We've got an old Jimny behind us, um, an Isuzu D-Max, and in front we've got a Mitsubishi Pajero Sport that's been slightly modified, and then up in front a Nissan Patrol that's quite heavily modified. So we'll see how we go. As I said, I'll, I'll do a bit of driving from inside the car. I'll also get my good friend here, Ben, to do some driving and I'll jump out and try and get some footage outside as well. We've well, got the tyres down to about 20 psi just to uh, help them wrap around some of these rocks and things. But at the moment I'm still in two-wheel drive, so... Well, we're not even into the serious stuff just yet. It has just started to rain a little bit, which is quite good actually, because it will keep the dust down, but also make it a bit more interesting for us. Let's see how we go. Okay, so here's a bit more serious. There's a few more quite large ruts to go through. We'll see how it goes. Obviously being such a short wheelbase, it's gonna bobble around very, very easily. As you can see there, we've got the tires down a little bit, just to let it wrap around the rocks and things. Awesome approach angle. Back wheel off the ground there, might just get a photo. You can see that uh, centre differential working its magic just there. So that wheel wants to spin, but the electronic limited slip type differential is stopping it from letting away all the power to the rear wheels, or to that rear wheel specifically. There's no limited slip diff at the back or front, as in just left and right wheels, but that uh, centre diff definitely helps out a lot. Okay, so we're going to go try and go through this little trough of water here, which is pretty, it's not too deep, but it's, as you can see, it's quite narrow, um, which will be good for the little Jimny. The Isuzu is getting through not too bad. Let's see how the little Jimny goes. Fairly deep, but it's going through all right so far. Beautiful, straight up. Wow. <laughs> straight Love through that. Oh okay, yeah, so we've got a bit of a cutaway here, which shouldn't be too much of a problem for the Jimny being so so narrow compared with the rest of the cars. I might just get out for this one and we can have a look from the outside. Yeah, like most things when you're four-wheel driving, nothing really looks that serious when you're on camera, but when you're here in person, it's definitely more serious than it looks. Like even this little part here, you don't really want to scratch the body or anything. That's going to be an interesting little part for the Jimny going up through there. But we'll see in a second. Sorry, I'm just going to take some photos if the camera gets in the way. Sorry about that. Okay, so you see then all four wheels are spinning. That center diff, or whatever it is, the traction control system really helped out. So one wheel didn't spin away all the power. There's not much that hangs down apart from the diff. There's a couple of little tow hooks. And that's about it. But yeah, certainly no body damage. The approach and departure angle is awesome. Like look at the back there, it's just, just sticking out. The bumper bone, that's it. There, there you go again, 
That centre diff doing its job. Just mind those wheels as we're going up. The back one over the top of it. Beautiful. It like it wasn't even there. Okay, so I've got the camera off my head now. We're just going to zoom in on a few bits. Apparently here you uh, flip a couple of, or pop up a couple of wheels as we go. Oh yeah. So after speaking with Ben, the driver in there, he said that it's actually good that it's automatic because it's, uh, you don't have to worry about trying to ride the clutch and wringing the neck out of the engine. You can just use the automatic, leave it in whatever gear you need and just um, push the go pedal. And pretty close to the seal. But yeah, I'm so surprised at how far this thing has, has got, even in this wet condition. It just hasn't really stopped. Like there's a few times we had to pack up the road a bit with a few rocks, but it just kept pulling through. Considering this has got standard tires as well, and it's wet, it's, yeah, it's amazing really what, how far it goes off road. Bit of a rut just up here. This will probably dip right into it being such a small car, small short wheelbase. But that, the very short overhangs make it really good as well. So it never scrapes the bumper bar or anything. Too easy. I'm gonna try and go up. This is pretty steep. It doesn't probably doesn't look like it on camera, but it's actually really steep. And there's that center diff again. Pulling it all the way up. Even if it does spin the back wheels, it eventually just sends it to the front or it uses the brake, I think, to send the power back to the front and pulls it straight up. It's so plucky, this thing. Just what it's an eager, just wants to go further and further. I think with some light modifications, it'll yeah, be pretty much unstoppable. As you can see so far, the Jimny offers exceptional off-road performance. During our testing, the car showed outstanding ability. Its great approach and departure angles and excellent center diff control system make it one of the most capable standard SUVs we've ever tested. It's especially impressive when you consider the tracks we were tackling. These were a lot more serious than your average country camping trip dirt road, and probably a lot more aggressive than what you'd expect any standard car to be able to conquer. Now let's head back into the manual version and see how that shapes up off-road. Okay, now we're at a different track, and we'll try and get some better footage for you. So I'll just put it into four-wheel drive. Just a matter of moving that lever down. The little symbol comes up on the dash. We've got the tyres down to about 23 PSI, I think they were. So you can let them down a little bit more if you want to and get even more traction, but um, I think it should be all right. So what I'll do is I'll do a couple of uh, little sections from inside the car to give you a bit of a view. And I'll jump out and let my friend uh, Ben from the office drive. He's a pretty serious a 4x4 guy. Um, he's much better at picking the lines than me, so it's actually good if he has a go and I jump out and get some decent footage. To start with, I've left the stability control left on, but as you can see, limiting the wheel spin also limits the engine's ability to rev and provide power. All right, let's see if we can get through this little muddy section here. I'll let Ben take over. We can have a look at the outside. Pretty deep. Was it? Well, should be all right though. Scotch. Why don't you wear boots? <laughs> 
Okay, so we've got a little mud section here. We'll see how the car goes. We've got Ben driving. It's not too deep, but it's a bit boggy. I'll just get out of his way when he comes past. I've got the traction and stability control turned off. I think it's still in high range. Although he might have changed it for this. Try again. Beautiful. Suzuki hasn't provided an official water weighting figure, but there is a very high amount air intake system. After testing this relatively deep crossing with our modified Nissan Patrol recovery vehicles, the Jimny pulled through with no trouble. Well, that was pretty good. That was about as deep as you want to go. We checked the air intake pipe and air filter straight after the crossing, and there was no evidence of water accessing the important bits. The good thing about those mats is you can just step straight on them, and they uh, keep the mud off the carpet. Got a few little water. Crossings through here. Sorry about the keys rattling away. I'll try and get rid of those. So the good thing about having a narrow little car is you can get through te more technical sections a bit easier than a big chunky car. And you've got a few more lines to choose from as well. But what a great little car this is, you know, standard production car and it's just tackling this pretty rough stuff quite easily without too much trouble. So we're just going to check how deep this is. It's not too bad. I'll watch you go through. Oh, thanks mate. <laughs> Big puddles like this, it's always good to check the depth, especially murky water, you can't see the bottom. But this one doesn't seem too bad, especially on this side of it. But we'll let the big patrol go through first and see how it looks. Ah, oh, it's nothing. Go. I might just go to the right a little bit more than, than Ben just to avoid those sticks over there. Yeah, it's not too bad. They can be pretty deceiving, those big puddles, especially murky water. They can uh, because they can suddenly just drop right down without without warning. So it's always good to check. Check first. I think if you are planning on doing a lot of off-roading in your new Jimny, you might be better off buying the um, buying the automatic version because as you can probably see, I'm having to ride the clutch quite a bit because there's not heaps of torque from this engine. And then the automatic, you sort of just yeah apply the throttle as you need it. I'm sure a lot of 4x4 guys out there will be quick to tell me, you know, duh. But yeah, it's definitely a... Um, a better off-road of the automatic. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, I think I'm confident in saying that this is definitely the best off-roader in this specific class, and it gets actually very close 
to being the best off-roader, production off-roader that I've ever driven. For what this is, it's such a plucky little car, um, very affordable, it's, yeah, it's really blown my mind in almost every area, except the, uh, the highway driving and obviously safety is not at the top of the class. But overall, what an outstanding little car. Like it, it definitely has a place in this market, especially when there's so many SUVs and crossovers out there that are just pretty much the same thing. It's very refreshing to have something like this on offer. Uh, it's more exciting. It's got real character and personality. And it's such an affordable price as well. Thanks for watching.